Welcome to this HP Video Technical Configuration Guide. In this video we're looking at link aggregation specifically on HP Comware and Provision switches. This TCG consists of two parts. In part one we'll discuss the guidelines for link aggregation as well as command explanations. In part two we'll continue the discussion with a practical demonstration of the configuration and setup of link aggregation. For guidelines and explanations continue watching part one or go to part two for practical demonstration. The topology we're using is a simple topology consisting of one provision switch and one Comware switch connected via two cables which will be bonding together into a single aggregated link. Link aggregation is known by different terms. On Cisco devices, it's known as ether channel or port channels. On Comware devices, it's known as bridge aggregation, link aggregation, or route aggregation. And it's known as trunking or TRKs on provision devices. Link aggregation bundles multiple links together to form a single logical interface. This provides redundancy if one of the physical interfaces goes down. Link aggregation will continue to use the remaining link when that interface goes down. It thus provides redundancy as well as increased bandwidth as traffic can be sent across multiple physical interfaces rather than having spanning tree blocking ports. Spanning tree views a link aggregated interface as a single interface rather than multiple physical interfaces. Link aggregation also provides for better load balancing than you would get with spanning tree. Load balancing can be done using various algorithms including source and destination MAC address rather than load sharing based on VLANs which is what's used when using protocols such as PVST or MSTP. A maximum of eight physical links can be used at any given time and in this video we're going to be using LACP or Link Aggregation Control Protocol and specifically Static LACP. When using Static LACP or LACP, both sides actively send LACP protocol data units or PDUs to each other. Both Comware and Provision switches support this mode. What can get confusing is that in Comware, Static LACP mode is known as Dynamic LACP. And this shouldn't be confused with dynamic LACP used on provision devices. When using dynamic LACP on provision, one side actively sends PDUs to the other side, whereas the second device passively waits for receipt of the PDUs. HP recommends the use of static LACP on provision devices, and you specify this by using the keyword LACP. On Comware devices, you specify dynamic LACP. So just be careful, on Comware, dynamic LACP is static LACP. To configure static LACP on a provision device, you type enable conf t, and then you use the command trunk, and list the specific interfaces that are gonna be bonded together, or form part of the link aggregation. Individual interfaces can be listed via commas. So for example, 1, 2, 4, 6. Or you could list a range of interfaces by using a hyphen. So for example, 1, 4. To add interfaces 1, 2, 3, and 4 to the link aggregation. You then specify a TRK. Now the number here is of local significance only. The range of TRKs is device dependent. Use question mark to see a list of TRKs available on the specific device. When setting up TRKs between provision devices as an example, different TRK numbers can be configured on each end. They do not need to match. So in summary, the TRK number is a local value assigned to the link aggregation. Once you've specified the TRK, you select the protocol to use, in this case, LACP. The default is to use no protocol. Options here would include 
LACP and trunk, which specifies no protocol. In this case, we're using LACP and have thus explicitly specified it here. A new TRK interface is by default untagged in VLAN 1. So if previously you had tagged the physical interfaces, such as 1 and 2, as soon as they are added to a TRK, the interfaces are logically removed from the switch and a new interface, the TRK, is logically added to the switch. New interfaces are by default untagged in VLAN 1. So if you want to permit multiple VLANs across the TRK, you need to specify the tagged and untagged VLANs across the TRK. So as an example, VLAN 1 is untagged across TRK 1. That is the default. But any other VLAN, such as VLAN 10, need to be tagged across the TRK. Be careful, by default, only VLAN 1 is untagged across the TRK. All other VLANs need to be explicitly tagged. To configure the Comware side of the link aggregation, type System View. Create a bridge aggregation interface. So type the command interface bridge aggregation and a sequence number. In this case, I've specified one. It is once again locally significant. By default, LACP is not used. No protocol is used by default. So you have to explicitly specify that the mode is dynamic, which equates to static LACP. You then need to assign ports or interfaces to the link aggregation. So in this example, We've got interface gigabit 101, interface gigabit 102 that are assigned to link aggregation group 1. Notice the 1 here specifies the link aggregation interface that was created previously. Now in a similar way to provision, a bridge aggregation interface is a new logical interface. And by default, interfaces are untagged in VLAN 1. So if multiple VLANs need to be specified across the link aggregation, you need to explicitly permit them. So in this example, we've specified that the port is a trunk. We've then explicitly permitted VLAN 1 and 10 across the trunk. You could also allow all VLANs by using the keyword all. Now some warnings. Ensure proper order of operation when configuring Comware devices. So firstly, create the bridge aggregation interface, then add the physical interfaces to the bridge aggregation, and then configure the bridge aggregation with permitted VLANs. The physical interfaces inherit the configuration from the bridge aggregation. If you configure the physical interfaces first and then add them to the bridge aggregation, a reboot may be required for proper operation. So ensure that you configure Comware devices in this sequence or this order. Other pointers with regards to troubleshooting. Ensure that the speed and duplex is the same on all ports on both sides that form part of the bridge aggregation. Ensure that the type is configured the same. If one side is configured as access and the other side as trunk or hybrid, you may encounter issues. Ensure that the PVID or port VLAN identifier also known as the native VLAN, is the same on both sides. In other words, the PVID or untagged VLAN or native VLAN is the same on both sides of the trunk. Ensure that the permitted VLANs are the same. Essentially, to ensure that the bridge aggregation works, make sure that all ports are configured in the same way, with the same speed, same duplex, same type, same physical media, trunk or hybrid, and permitted VLANs. I'll be demonstrating the configuration and testing of link aggregation in a moment. But before doing that, here are some useful provision show commands. Show interface brief, show trunk, show LACP, show interface display. On Comware, display link aggregation summary, display link aggregation verbose, display interface bridge aggregation one, or whichever bridge aggregation number is used. That concludes part one of this TCG, explaining link aggregation. In the second part, we'll continue the discussion with a practical demonstration of the configuration of link aggregation between HP Comware and HP Provision switches.